Now, the Yoruba culture is a very rich and unique one. Studies in Yoruba language and culture are growing daily. I'll be talking to Nigerian-American archaeologist, cultural historian, and editor-in-chief. The journal African Archaeological Review, Akimumi Ogundinro, his research addresses the archaeology of social complexity and cultural history in the Yoruba world of Western Africa. He has also authored several publications on the Yoruba culture. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thanks for having me. It's so beautiful to talk about uh, Yoruba culture. Well, our station is actually situated where the Yorubas are you know, mostly predominant. Yes. Uh, what is this particular thing about uh, the significance of the Yoruba culture to, to the world? Oh, thanks for that question. Uh, Yoruba culture is a global culture. It is the most prominent uh, African culture uh, in the Western world as well as in other parts of the world, simply because the Yoruba in their history, in their, in their philosophy, they are global thinking. They are urban people. People who live in who build and live in cities. So they are cosmopolitan, and that reflects in their religion, in their way of life. So as a result of that, we have the prominence of Yoruba traditions from Brazil to Cuba to North America to Europe. So in a nutshell we have a history to celebrate. We have a tradition to celebrate. Makes sense. Uh, well, there is this concept of omoluabi mm -hmm. in Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you wake up, uh, you see your elder, the way you relate to your, uh, with the elders, you know, it's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's an equivalent, uh, equivalent of um, the Hausa culture uh, known as terbia. So omolu the concept of omoluabi, with the way the younger generations are growing up now, mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. think they still have, they still imbibe, they still have that quality, that characteristic of being referred to as omoluabi? Well, Omaluabi is a concept that guides one in the, how you navigate journey in life. Respect for the elders, for example, is the, is the foundation of Omaluabi, where you, you are able to respect the elders. That doesn't mean that the younger ones do not have any right to speak out for themselves. They do. That's why we say, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> Ilefe was created with the wisdom of both the young and the old. So we still have Omaluabi. However, the problem we're having is that we like to copy things that are foreign to us without critically examining whether those things are good for us. We, we want to be global, and by being global, we tend to think that by, by copying Western traditions, uh, epishly is the is the way forward. So m I'll ask our our parents, I'll ask our our guardians, to really pay attention to what makes us human, and that what makes us human begins with Omaluabi. So Omaluabi is still there, but we are losing it because we have other values that are mm -hmm. uh, that are actually you know yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, there's this uh, there's this religion, you know, the religious aspect of being a Yoruba person. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, we have um, adopted you know, the major religions uh, such as uh, the Islamic religion and Christian religion. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. some will say, come on, this does not belong to us. I know some <laughs> people here in our office, they will say, I'm not interested in your religion, your, your Western religion, mm -hmm. your imported religion. Yeah, yeah. My religion is the Yoruba culture, is Yoruba yeah, religion. Yeah. So can you tell us about these? Why we need to also appreciate that which we are you know, we, we know our forefathers with. Yes. Well, uh, the Yoruba built cities. They created empires. They established long-distance trade. They created technologies in the Asian world. For example, glass making was one of the uh, uh, peaks of civilizations. And the Yoruba were the only group of Africans south of the Sahara, outside Egypt, that were making glass 700 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They traded with Mali Empire. So. People who did all of those things, they, they did it based on Orisha religion. So Orisha religion worked for them. Orisha is the deity. Is the deity. That is Yoruba religion, Orisha. Mm. So, and Orisha is more than religion. It's a way of life. We talk about Omaluabi. In the beginning of Omaluabi mm. is the Orisha. So uh, the reality today is that we have Christianity, we have Islam. They are not going anywhere. We just have to learn how to coexist. Mm with this religion, but this religion should not denigrate those people who subscribe to Orisha religion. Orisha religion does not proselytize, it doesn't convert. 
people come into it as a way of discovering who they are. And that is what the Odisha tradition is about. So we just have to recognize the Ishese people, that is people who are who are who subscribe to traditionalists. And so we just have to realize that they are not going anywhere. And despite the impact of Christianity and Islam, the Ishese is growing. Yeah, but then uh, <laughs> we are made to understand, or probably we just grow. Uh, uh, you know, we grow into seeing it as when you say someone. You know, worships mm. Orisha. Yes, uh, the person is, you know, quote unquote, has been fetish. Mm. You know, mm. in the practice, yes. in the rituals, yes. and so yes. on and so yes. forth. Uh, how do you address this? Every religion has its own fetish. I've been to Catholic church. I've been to. I've in my own family. I have all of them in my family. I have Christians. I have Muslims. By being fetish, <laughs> I mean diabol being, being diabolic in in your ways. That is the that is the impact of Western and Eastern influence. That is the influence of their East, of, of of their way of converting us, they, they reduce African traditions into fetish, into something diabolic, into something that is negative. That is not the case. Um, I, I did my research, for example, in uh, Ocean Grove, in, in Oshobo. I've done my research in, in Shango, in Odudua mm. Grove, in Ileife. Mm. I, I've seen firsthand how people worship. They are also praying to God. To the supreme being there's nothing diabolic about it the same way you can use christianity or islam to do negative things yes of course there are things in yoruba religion too that you can use to do negative things but people are doing more good than bad mm -hmm. and i think that is what we need to uh, realize and re reconcile we, we would like to explore some of your uh, research works you know one of it one of uh, which addresses the archaeology of social complexity mm. and cultural history in the Yoruba world of Western Africa. Yes. What does that entail? Oh, thank you very much. I, I'm an archaeologist and a student by training, as well as an anthropologist. That means I've de dedicated my career to studying the history, the deep history of the Yoruba going back to about 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if I, I just published a book uh, titled The Yoruba in New History, in which I provide us with a, a new way of, of thinking about Yoruba history. So I'm the kind of guy that goes out into the bush. I've studied in Ilefe, I've studied in Ijesha land, I've studied in, now I'm carrying out a major research project in, on Oyo Empire. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, it entails trying to understand the origins, the foundations of Yoruba history, how we evolved, how we developed, and the kinds of uh, uh, institutions that we built. See, we don't really know much about our institutions, our past institutions. If we know much about them, perhaps we'll be able to figure out a better policy about how to move forward. If you do not know where you're coming from, you will not know where you're going. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and and I I don't think many of our policymakers really understand the value. Of uh, so, so are you trying to compare these to the broad spectrum of uh, the democratical principles that we practice in our, I mean, that we yes. adopt in our country? Yes. Uh, talk about the Yoruba, the Oyo Empire, mm -hmm. leadership, yes, the the, the monarchical hierarchy and and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that? will be better than what the concept of democracy actually is. It will not be better. But I will say that democratic principles were embedded in this monarchical system of governments. Yoruba monarchy was not absolute. Mm. The Yoruba did not develop absolute monarchy. They developed consultative, deliberative monarchy. So you mean there, there are checks and balances oh, yes. in, in the Yoruba monarchical system? Of course. You know, that's why a royal house cannot appoint its own king. The people, the lineages who are non-royal, they are the ones who usually select a king by election, by divination, But they by believe the king, the king is absolute, and absolute power you know, corrupts absolutely, no. they, they say. No, they do not believe that. The, you know, there, were, there were kings in the past who hijacked power, but these were aberrations, these were not the norms. The norms was that you have the king that will consult with the lords, the lineage heads. So the Yoruba did not develop absolute monarchy the way we have it in Europe. So when we say monarchy, they are, they, the Yoruba already embedded. Uh, uh, democratic principles into their monarchy. That's why I used the proverb before, mm -hmm. you know, that it is the wisdom of the people that creates the society. Right. Uh, so so uh, um, how accommodating uh, are the Yoruba people? Because um, 
I, I know, well, do I say for a fact, but then to a larger extent that Yorubas are quite accommodating. And that's why we have, you know, different, we have influx of people from different, you know, religious, I mean, right, ethnic yes. backgrounds. Mm. Uh, so are we still that accommodating, especially in this current situation facing the country where people are shouting, mm. let's secede, you should go your <laughs> way, we should stay our own cause. Uh, do you think we still have that accommodating, you know, characteristic in us? We do. I said something, uh, saying something at the beginning of the program. I said that um, the Yoruba build cities. People who build cities, they cannot be parochial. They cannot be tribal. They are yeah. always open because they, ex they, look for, they look out for the best to come to their city. Mm. So the Yoruba, and, and that's the foundation of Yoruba, and that's why the, the Yoruba in Nigeria today, I will argue, they are the most accommodating. Mm. in terms of openness because it is it is the it is the it in the institution of the yoruba to be open minded mm. so however and uh, my i will call out to my fellow nigerians to realize that that fact and hopefully we can we can use that model in other parts of the country that openness where anyone anywhere you come from to this lagos mm. you can make it if you work hard, right? Absolutely. <laughs> if, if, you, if you work if hard. If you work hard, yes, yes. Let's get back to your book again. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that your book, you know, you know seeks to address, yeah. you know, for us to understand? What are the things that we also need to, uh, to know? We need to, es to elevate our understanding of Yoruba history beyond what some of our pioneers did. Mm -hmm. Like, many of us have read Samuel Johnson's History of the Yorubas, for example. So what my book has done is to bring up to date the research of the last 40 years to inform the question, who are the Yoruba, where do we come from, and what makes Yoruba Yoruba, right? And my research led, led me to the conclusion that it is not true that Yoruba came from Mecca or somewhere or else, Egypt. or Egypt. That's not where we came from. So we came from heaven, as the uh, tradition well, has it. You know, well, we with, did not with, with, with a four, is it four or seven-legged, <laughs> you know, chicken? I'm yes, a, we didn't just draw from heaven. Uh, I, I'm an archaeologist. Right. I, I deal with evidence and facts. Right. My evidence led me to the conclusion that, and I'm not the only one, by the way, that the Yoruba, as a, if we talk about a the Yoruba start with the language. If you want to understand the origin of a people, start with their language. The, the language we, sp we speak is a descendant of an ancestral language that we call Yoruboid, Proto-Yoruboid. That language, that old language developed about 4,000 years ago. Okay. It includes present-day Igala, okay. Ishakuri, and Yoruba. What about the Benin? No. Not Be, that. Uh, Edo is a different la language. Okay. Then about 300 BC, these three language fam I mean, family began to break apart. So the Gala moved to the other side of the river Niger. The Shekiri happens to have traveled along the river to where they are today. And then the other Yoruba began to radiate gradually from the present day Kogi state. That is where the ancestral Yoruba developed and began wow. to migrate. So that migration took uh, about uh, 600 to 700 years. Uh, so so this is, so, con this is um, <laughs> very different from the concept of the fact that we came from Ile Ife. There is, it is not, there is a reason for that. And I will explain, in my book, I explain why that story came about. Right. Ile Ife played a very important role. It is not the first kingdom in Yoruba land. So, so it the was first one, kingdom it, is in Kogi? No, well, they are in the Kiti, the Kiti area. Okay. There's, a, there's an Asian kingdom we call Oba Kingdom. Okay. There were other kingdoms that have, disapp I mean, that have disappeared, right? So Ilefe was the last of these first generation of kingdoms. In the, in, uh, I'm talking about a period between 700 and 900 AD. I'm talking about more than a thousand years ago. So Ilefe was one of the was the last of yeah. those ancient ones, and Ilefe took advantage. It's like Akai in the the last child who benefited from the wisdom of the elders, right? Okay. Of the, of the senior brothers and sisters. So Ilefe then repackaged all the innovations already happening and turned itself into the center of the Yoruba world. That, so it, it is the foundation of Yoruba civilization. Wow. It is not the origin of the Yoruba people, but it's the origin of Yoruba classical civilization. 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 Origin of Yoruba civilization. Yes, as we know it. Mm -hmm. So we, when you talk about Yoruba, you talk about Ifa tradition. This is one of the greatest innovations among the Yoruba. You talk about the terracotta and all these other beautiful artworks. 
the Apple Elephant. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a very fantastic read. What, what is the title of that book again? The title is The Yoruba, A New History. Yoruba, A New History. Uh, yes. That's uh, really very, very interesting. <laughs> uh, Nigerian-American archaeologist, cultural historian, and editor-in-chief, the Journal African Archaeology, uh, Archaeological Review, Akimumi Ogundiro. Thank you so much for that nugget. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.